The Cabinet of Dr. Caragari is the most visually interesting film that I've ever seen, and I've seen a, a decent amount of movies. It's so different from anything else I've seen in a visual sense, and the answer as to why is because of the time period. No, not just because it was made in the 20s, or because it looks old, but but rather the artistic movement that helped create it. German Expressionism was a movement that peaked an in interest in the 1920s, particularly in Germany, or as it was known back then, the Weimar Republic. The German Expressionist style is so different to what films were prior to the 1920s, and especially to how films are today. No other movement really ever came close to what German Expressionism is able to visualise. The human psyche, emotions and thoughts are all present in the mise-en-scene, set design, acting, lighting, and the framing. This all acted together to distort the world so as to present this subjective, internalised view. The movement during its peak produced a series of films. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari released in 1920 is just one of them. It is, however, perhaps the most well-known expressionist film. It does routinely show up on top 100 film lists, and for good reason. A massive part of why that happens, however, is... Probably one of the first things you'll see when you watch this film, the set design, it's non-conventional to say the least. The world and cabin of Dr. Caragari just looks wrong and it really draws you in. It's kind of like a fucked up picture storybook. The setting within this film is a character of its own. Its appearance represents the protagonist in a struggle and represents the tone of the narrative at any one time. And before I get too ahead of myself, I need to point this out. Caligari is often cited as the first horror film ever made. It is, at its core, a horror film that uses expressionist techniques to create an atmosphere. This film, as you've seen thus far, is very weird. And you have to remember that back in 1920, films themselves were still rare. The supposedly first vampire movie ever made, Nosferatu, didn't come out until 1922. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is literally older than vampire movies. I can't imagine a world without shitty vampire movies. I literally can't. And, well, this might explain why it's so different. The film was released well before anyone really had a decent understanding of filmic language. There was no conventional style back in 1920. There was simply filmmaking. This lack of conventions, in my opinion, is probably what led to this film's intense styling. And well, this extends to the narrative as well. It's pretty complex, strange for its time as well. It's basically also the first slasher movie. A circus rolls in the town and the hit attraction is a symbologist, a sleepwalker. And Cesare, the sleepwalker, is supposedly able to tell people's future. And his master, the titular Dr. Caligari, is insane and loves murdering anyone who fucks with him. He uses Cesare as his, like, tool for murder, effectively. It's a pretty basic story, but for the time it was extremely different. Back in 1920, and even 101 years later in 2021, Caligari is a strange film. It's the outlier in pretty much every way possible. And like I've said, and you've seen in the background, this film is weird, and that's my main reason as to why I love it so much. It's unique, of course, but it has history to it. It's creepy, off-kilter, and nightmarish at times, and I really like it. You don't get films which take massive risks anymore. Films as an industry are far too commercial now for that. Profit is the most important thing when it comes to making a film now. But that's a topic for another video. We won't really touch on this one. But I do want to touch on the development process behind this film, primarily the writing. Caligari was written by Carl Mayer and Hans Janowicz. Both men served during World War I and were self-proclaimed pacifists by the time they had met following World War I. And this will be extremely important in a bit. The general story of Caligari is inspired by events within both Mayer's and Jenowitz's life. Jenowitz witnessed a murder in a park one day. A girl went through some bushes and then a man walked for a short while longer. And then the man came back. The next day, Janowicz saw in the newspaper that girl had been murdered. And, well, it's pretty obvious to say that this is kind of the inspiration behind the slasher aspects of Caligari. And the town's name, Holzenwall, also became the name of the town in Caligari. 
The hypnotism angle came from when they watched a circus act where a strongman did feats of strength under hypnosis. The duo supposedly wanted to create a story that denounced arbitrary authority as brutal and insane. And this makes a lot of sense when you remember that both writers served in World War I, a war which, for many, was effectively just waiting in a line to die. Unless you're an officer, you were just cannon fodder. It was a war of attrition and it cost two million German lives. Mayor and Genowitz were just lucky. So it's understandable why the Duro had such a disdain of authority, especially our authority, which is meaningless. Many film critics have linked Cesare to a soldier because he blindly follows orders. And whether or not that was the intent, you can definitely see it in the film. Cesare is given no real free will. And he gets it later, but in his first act of free will, Cesare kidnaps Jane, the film's love interest, and then he just drops dead a few moments later. No wounds, he just dies. And then we learn that Caligari himself is the director of an insane asylum who became obsessed with a myth. The myth of the Caligari, an 11th century monk who used a sleepwalker to kill people. And well, this would be well and all if the film wasn't a delusion in the mind of a protagonist. Francis, our protagonist, is revealed to be a patient in an asylum run by Dr. Caligari, with all the film's other characters being staff or patients. And this twist recontextualizes the entire film. It's now a film about a man and his unraveling psyche. And with this twist, the core focus of German Expressionism rears its ugly head, the human psyche. And isn't that what this film shows? Although, I do admit, the final shot of the film does leave this whole thing up to interpretation, as it does suggest that the asylum director, Caligari, might be hiding something. Caligari creates an atmosphere that is simply weird. Everything in the film is dreamlike. It is twisted and completely different to the normal world. This enables, once again, this introspective quality to take hold. The setting and visual style directly communicate the insanity of the main character, which explains this dreamlike aesthetic. While the Expressor's movement is dead, it died in the late 1920s because of the Nazi party. The general style, however, still lives on. German Expressionism greatly inspired both horror and noir genres. Both genres are introspective by nature, as both are very psychological mediums. However, in recent years, films aren't really looking to Expressionism for inspiration. Even horror and noir films often just steal ideas from within their own medium and genre. Which pretty much means that these films aren't being watched or used anymore. Which is tragic, as some of these expressionist films have great ideas or result in what is now known as filmmaking conventions. So, if you do end up watching this video, I highly recommend you check out other expressionist work. It's very interesting from a film history point of view, but also if you ever plan on making movies or are just interested, it's good to understand where certain aspects of film language come from so that you can better utilize it in your own work or when you watch other people's work. But if you know about Caligari, you know that Dr. Caligari isn't actually finished. We still have two other films to check out of wildly different qualities and different content matters. But for now, I will be looking at the 2005 remake and figuring out if it's actually good and well, yeah, I know there's a sequel. I know it exists. I'd, I'll look at it, and then I'll get back to you on it. Because out of what I already know, I know it's probably not going to be good. But, yeah, watch Dr. Caligari. It's excellent.